Unit 10, page 85. Read. Exercise 1. Read and listen to the text. Banksy. Banksy is the name of a popular urban artist from Britain. He has become famous for his street art, which has appeared on walls and billboards in London and in other cities around the world. However, no one knows his real name, his age, or where he lives. Journalists write stories about him, but never have any actual contact with him. He is regarded as a mystery, which is one of the main factors contributing to his success. The surfaces that he paints on are often incorporated into his work, and he makes clever use of street corners and brickwork. His striking images are meant to be funny, and they usually contain some comment about our society. Apart from his paintings, he has also claimed responsibility for a number of publicity stunts over the past few years. For example, in 2001, he climbed into the penguin area at London Zoo and wrote, We are bored of fish! in two-metre-high letters on the wall. In May 2005, he made a primitive cave painting, showing a human hunting animals with a shopping trolley. He hung it secretly on the wall at the British Museum. The museum has since allowed it to stay there. He has also slipped several works onto the walls of four major New York museums, two of which remain in place. Nowadays, Banksy does some paid work for charities such as Greenpeace, but he refuses to work for big businesses or do advertising. He has also done a series of paintings based on famous works of art such as Monet's Water Lily Pond, except that Banksy's version has discarded shopping trolleys in the water along with the beautiful water lilies. He sells them to a small gallery in London, but you'll never see him there. Pavement Picasso Pavement Picasso is another name for Julian Beaver, a chalk artist from Britain. He has been creating amazing chalk drawings on the pavement for over ten years now. He has worked in cities all over the world, from Brussels to New York. He works in chalk, so his art, which takes about three days to complete, can easily be destroyed by a shower of rain. The most important thing for him is to get a photo at the end before that happens. He usually puts himself in the painting when he takes a photo of his work. He first started pavement drawing with copies of famous paintings like the Mona Lisa in the streets of Europe. Then he started creating portraits of famous people. For example, when Princess Diana died, he did a portrait of her on a London pavement. But Beaver is most famous for his amazing 3D, three-dimensional images, which he started doing a few years ago. These are drawn to give the impression of a three-dimensional object when you look at them from a certain angle. The effect is so convincing that pedestrians will swerve to avoid potholes he has drawn. He often does paintings depicting larger-than-life creatures and objects, such as gigantic lobsters or huge portable computers. He also painted Bill Clinton on a New York pavement when he became President of the United States. Some of his most elaborate 3D images show him diving into a swimming pool or being rescued from a burning building by Batman. Nowadays, Beaver is often paid by companies to advertise their products, but he still works on the pavement. He says... My art is for anybody. It's for people who wouldn't go into an art gallery. It's art for the people. Unit 10, page 88. Listen 
Exercises 1 and 2. Listen. 1. Back a bit. Back a bit. Now lift. Oh, this is heavy. What is it? The Houses of Parliament. Well, oh. it weighs a ton. They should have it on wheels. I know. I said that. But the set designer wouldn't listen. I'm going to have a word with the director. Oh, he won't listen either. They never do. Oh. Two. So, then you walk to the chair and sit down at the table. That's right. And I sing my aria. And then... I come and stand next to you. Yes, actually, maybe you could try sitting at the table opposite me. If you prefer. Well, it's a little hard to sing with you standing next to me. If you say so. So, let's try from the beginning of the scene again. Come Three. Oh, I just love this silk. Yes, it smells wonderful, doesn't it? Mm. You don't think the colour makes me look dull? Oh, not at all. You look exquisite. Shall I help you with the laces? Yes, thank you. <sighs> oh, not too tight. Oh, sorry. And have you seen my shoes? Um, yes, ah, they're here. I wish I didn't have to run onto the stage at the start of the scene. These shoes aren't made for running. I know, but they look superb. Thank you. You're a darling. Now, where's my script? I need to practice my lines. Four. One, two, one, two, one, 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 one. OK, that's fine. Can you test the mics on the drum kit? Sure, hang on. All the lights have gone off. I can't see anything. Sorry, just changing some of the lights. I need to keep them off for a minute. Can you find the drums anyway? I'll try. <laughs> oh! oh. <sighs> Found them. Five. Now, the first time we hear the melody, I want you to play it softly, as if it were a memory of a dream. Do you understand? As quietly as you possibly can. <laughs> I dropped it. Oh. Violins? More expressive, please. More romantic. <laughs> Trumpets? Pianissimo. Remember that the violins have the melody. Hmm. All right. Let's try it again from the beginning. Six. And then it's step, step, turn, jump. Step, step, turn. Oh, which way do I turn? To the left or to the right? To the right, but keep looking straight ahead the whole time. Look straight at the audience, so your body turns, but your head stays still. All right. Can we try it again? <sighs> step, step, turn, jump. Ah! I forgot. I turned to the left. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's do it again. Sorry. I'm being so slow today. Unit 10, page 91. Language skills, exercise 1. Listen and check. Did you enjoy your trip to the Tate Modern? Yes, I did, but I didn't understand many of the exhibits. When I went there, I didn't understand any of them. Which exhibition did you see? 
We saw the Art in Action exhibition. One of the pieces was the room itself. The walls were painted red and the room was full of red furniture. Were there any figures sitting in the room? No, it was just the room and the furniture. Another piece was a tower built entirely of radios. Were there a lot of people visiting the exhibition? No, there weren't very many because it was early in the morning. But most people looked just as confused as me. <laughs> Did you visit the whole gallery? No, we saw every room in the Art in Action exhibition and some of the drawings in the Landscape exhibition. But we missed a few of the rooms in the permanent collection because we wanted some lunch. Everyday English 10 Teacher's Book Page 120 Evaluating an Experience Exercise 1 Read and listen to the dialogue. What did you do at the weekend? I went to see a play with my aunt. We got a train down to London and then went to the Globe Theatre. What was the play like? It was fantastic. I loved every minute of it. Really? What was so good about it? Everything, really. The costumes were wonderful and the actors were awesome. They were so athletic. It sounds great. And I loved the main character. He was such a brilliant actor and so handsome. You should come with me next time I go. Yes, I'd love to. Everyday English 10 Teacher's Book Page 120 Evaluating an Experience Exercise 6 Listen and repeat the sentences. 1. The songs were so wonderful. 2. The main character was such an atrocious actor. 3. I'd never seen such amazing scenery. 4. The special effects were so brilliant. 5. The actors were all wearing such beautiful costumes. 6. The orchestra played so well. everyday english 10 teachers book page 120 evaluating an experience exercises 7 and 8 listen to four dialogues dialogue 1 what did you do at the weekend i went to see carmen oh right is she uh, a cousin of yours it's an opera oh <laughs> Yes, of course, I knew that. I was joking. So, what was it like? It was good. At least, the music was good. Mm. What didn't you like? I didn't like the story. It was a bit boring, after the first part. Mm. Was it long? Yes, it went on for hours. But, as I said, the music was beautiful. And the female lead was fantastic. She was such a great singer. Dialogue 2 I saw the new version of Robin Hood, the one released last year. Really? Who did you go with? I went with my brother. We got the bus into London and saw it at the West End. And what was it like? It was absolutely terrible. Oh. What was so bad about it? Everything. Well, the story is okay. The same as the other films, really. Hmm, yeah. I love the story of Robin Hood. But this new version, it was so awful. For a start, the music was really annoying, and the costumes, they were just silly. They didn't look real. Oh dear. And the male and female leads, Robin Hood and Maid Marian, were both atrocious. They were such bad actors. Oh, it sounds terrible. It was. Dialogue 3 
What did you do on Saturday night? I went to the theatre with my parents and my granddad. It was his birthday.、Hmm. What play did you see? It wasn't a play actually. It was a musical. Really? Any good? Yes, I enjoyed it. It was great to look at. The costumes were fantastic, and the scenery was amazing.、Hmm. What about the show itself? Well, I don't know much about musicals. I suppose it was okay. The dancing was really good. I enjoyed that. Dialogue four. Didn't you go and see a ballet last weekend? Yes. Well, it wasn't exactly a ballet. It was a modern dance performance. Oh right. Was it any good? Yes, I really loved it. What was so good about it? Well, the music was awesome. What style? A mixture of everything: classical, jazz, rock, hip hop. They used music to set the scene. There wasn't any scenery. And what was it about? Was there a story? Not really. It was about、um, relationships, I suppose. It doesn't sound that good to me. But you had to see it, really. I mean, the dancing was so incredible. The female lead was superb,、oh, and so beautiful. Literature Corner Five, page ninety-two, exercise one. Read and listen to the text. Sense and Sensibility, by Jane Austen. The Dashwood family owned a large area of land around their country house, Norland Park. Recently, the head of the family, an unmarried man of great age, had invited into his home his nephew, who was expected to inherit the house and land with his wife and children. The nephew, Mr. Henry Dashwood, and his wife, behaved kindly and thoughtfully towards the old gentleman. Not from interest in his fortune, but from goodness of heart, so that he was able to spend his last years comfortably with these pleasant and cheerful companions. By his first wife, pleasant and cheerful companion, one son, John. By his present wife, three daughters. John, a respectable, serious young man, had received a large inheritance from his mother. And had also added to his wealth by his own marriage. To him, therefore, the Norland fortune was not as important as to his sisters, who had very little money of their own. When the old gentleman died, it was discovered that he had not left his fortune to Henry Dashwood to do what he liked with, but but only to use during his lifetime. On Henry Dashwood's death. The inheritance would pass to his son John, and to John's son, a child of four years old. The old man had become fond of the small boy on his occasional visits to Norland, and so a spoilt child was preferred to Henry Dashwood's gentle wife and daughters, in spite of their years of loving care. No unkindness had been intended, however, and as a sign of his affection for the girls. The old gentleman left them one thousand pounds each. At first, Mr. Henry Dashwood was bitterly disappointed, as he had wanted the fortune more for his wife and daughters than for himself. But he soon realised that if he was careful with money in the next few years, he could save enough to provide generously for his family. Unfortunately, he did not live to carry out this plan. As he survived his uncle by only one year, and ten thousand pounds was all that remained for his widow and daughters. Just before his death, he sent for his son and begged him to take care of his stepmother and sisters. Mister John Dashwood had not the strong feelings for the rest of the family, but such a request at such a time naturally had an effect on him. So he promised to do everything he could. To make his father's family comfortable, he was not a bad young man, but rather cold-hearted, and rather selfish, although he was in general well respected. 
If he had married a pleasanter woman, he would probably have been even more respected, and perhaps have become pleasanter himself. But his wife was colder and more selfish than he was. Skills Roundup, nine to ten, page ninety-three. Listen. Listen to five people talking about advertising in schools. One. I don't see anything wrong with vending machines in schools. Yes, I guess it's advertising in a way, but students buy this food and drink outside school, so having it inside school isn't going to make any difference. Two. I think it's dangerous to allow large companies to provide things for schools. They say they're interested in education, but they're only really interested in selling things. This is just another way of getting inside the heads of young people. Three. I think sponsorship by big companies is a great idea because everybody wins. The school and the students win because they get books and equipment for free. The companies win because they get their names and logos into the schools. Four. I think a little bit of advertising in schools is okay. You know, logos on vending machines, that kind of thing. But I wouldn't like to see big advertisements in corridors or logos in the classroom. That would be too much. A school should be a place for education, not business. Five. I think businesses get involved in education because the government doesn't give schools enough money. That's why head teachers can't say no to big business. If the government provided more money, they wouldn't have to accept advertising.